pursuit of victory has pushed us to the front of the pack, to the brink of destruction, and across the finish line for decades. Regardless of the driver, the vehicle, or the terrain, these are the wheels that will help you win by a landslide. The process of relentlessly redefining performance cannot be learned or taught. It's in our DNA. dominance, proprietary patented race technology, proudly made in the USA, unparalleled customer service and support, the choice of champions, King Shocks, the leader in off-road shock technology. Good afternoon, friends of the world. Welcome to this episode of Fish Distics. My name is Cameron Steele. My co-host, Austin Fish Farner, is here with me. Austin, how you doing, buddy? Good, good. Glad to be here today. Stoked to be here. We're uh, here to unveil some new information and continuing information for the pilgrimage known as King of the Hammers. Of course, uh, my constant disclaimer, this is all opinion-based. Yes, you'll get some information, but make sure you do your own research and make sure you don't live by the fact we gave you something because, you know, not everything in life is true fact here. So anyway, we are blessed to be joined by the kingpin from King of the Hammers, 17 years running. Uh, Dave Cole is in the house. Dave, welcome to Fishistics to today. Hey, Pam. Hey, Fish. How you guys doing? Good. We're doing good. I mean, we're, here. <laughs> we're locked and loaded because we're fired up. When Dave Cole says he has some stuff to talk about, that means that the off-road universe is spinning. Uh, for those of you that may not know Dave, uh, he is quite outspoken, very passionate, has a huge love for not only our sport, but the athletes and drivers around it. I'm not just apple polishing him. I'm trying to make sure he doesn't come down on me on one of the driver's meetings because he has kicked my ass in front of a number of people before. And I want to make sure that I'm on his good side going into the six weeks I call King of the Hammers time so dave welcome uh we're excited 17 years man that's nothing to shake a stick at that's that's pretty impressive uh, promoting punch. and what it's grown into is uh nothing less than staggering hey, it's just a dumb it's dumb luck man so it's, it's all it's been and really really cool people yeah it's, well we, I mean, we're just having we're just still having fun so but thanks for being here and thanks I, it's been awesome i mean we were just talking about it i think i met you in 2008 out here so um it's been a crazy journey, but yeah, I was just going to share some information with you guys today. And um, there's been a couple just, yeah, just throw some stuff out there and start getting excited about some things. So I, uh, I'm already excited. One of the things I'm very excited about is that you're returning the motos. Uh, King of the motos is back. I know that's a exciting thing for some of the, the moto guys. You've also shifted it into a little bit of a different time frame. It's pretty cool for a guy who doesn't moto uh, to uh, turn loose your entire organization on trying to promote motorcycles out there. I, I think that's a good hard, good hard enduro fun time, so to speak. And the the, the things that, that you and the other athletes do on bikes blow my mind. I mean, like motorsports cool, King of the Hammers is rad, desert racing is super cool, like all that's awesome. But then when you watch a person, a man or a female throw their body on a bike up those rocks or down those rocks. It is to me, I, 
but it's just worth watching for me it's just worth watching I don't even worth know how you guys it's worth go doing it just to be able to watch them do it. It's the only hard enduro I've ever seen is the one we that Justin makes here. I just get fortunate enough to watch it. It's amazing. Well, I feel fortunate to be in my, I think, sixth uh, attempt at riding. You'll notice that I don't say I race King of the Motors. I'll race all the other classes, but this one I'm just riding for riding. fun and safety. Let's let's talk about some of the big, uh, the big things that are happening. Uh, I don't know where you want to start, but... Uh, we'll give you an open palette, then I'll start asking you some questions, but um, maybe first talk about what races we can expect and, and what the big moves are. Uh, so bikes will be the weekend early. Um, before every, So we've been opening the gate up like 10 days early for a while now. Um, that first weekend just basically been moving time, hangout time, and it still will be because the motos course by footprint doesn't take up very much. Um, probably an appropriate time to talk. Like, I've seen some really cool Facebook stuff lately about how we're closing the land and stuff. There's no closure. There's nothing different. We're renewing our permit, but it's the same permit we had before, which is we have the race course when we're racing, but only then. So you can still go wheeling everywhere. You can still go do all the things and have the fun, which is why it's fun. Um, but uh, Motos is only a, fa a fairly small footprint, uh, two different mountain ranges, Saturday and Sunday. Um, some crazy stuff that I can't even believe they've been trying. Um, and lots of cameras. We're gonna have full cameras for that as well. And then and then fast forward a week is when we go back into our normal schedule. So Saturday morning will be or Saturday will be um a limited class day of racing, but I I I've, I've already had my phone blow up just based on what we announced yesterday. Um I'm not sure exactly what classes are going to be Saturday versus Sunday because I had UTVs down for a 40 mile course on Saturday and I've gotten significant response that they'd rather see a full course on Sunday, which I can accommodate. We can still have an, an unlimited race with with a clear track for the big boys and, and girls and we can have a, um, a morning unlimited race, which is basically whatever whatever classes decide to go after the big course. We have two different courses. Um, and uh i'm going completely without a net here because i had this is something that i wouldn't i would normally walk past you but we've been thinking about this for a long time we're going to run the desert course in the opposite direction of what the ultra four guys are going to race the same dirt so desert guys will run clockwise pre-running will only be available clockwise from when we open on that thursday the second the third for pre-riding, fourth and fifth for racing will all be in the desert format, which is significantly different than the rocks on on the rock side of the world, um, but very similar on the other side. But for ultra four guys, they're going to have to pre-run in the desert format backwards. We're doing that because what we found is that it's the I mean we all know from if you've raced, you know it's a completely different race course if you're first on the road or if you're 350th on the road. And by the time we get to the end of the race week, we have beat the ground into a pretty ridiculous race course. But we found if you, when you unmark a race course, if you drive backwards, it's like being on top of a, like being on plane on a boat. Like you just kind of just, like you're comfortable. You're hitting the soft side of the whoop, right? So if we run desert guys one way, that'll create the chop one way and then run ultra four back the other way two things will happen one that ultra four guys will have a better race course and to the end net result to the land when we leave should be relatively neutral as opposed to just obliterated one direction waiting for the wind to blow back the other for a year so that that's good too okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna okay, just ask good. for let's clarify that so yep. you're talking about the course will open originally for the desert classes and they will race in one direction and everybody will have to pre-run that direction that the desert racers are going in yep okay will you, that you, go ahead and, and there will be significant like there's only three places where you could enter the course and in those places it will be passed abundantly clear that you're this is the direction of travel for you for the next three days and when we switch back the other way, we'll have that figured out. So after the desert races are complete, then the hammers cars or the ultra fours and the EMC and the and those racing the rock races 
will be able to pre-run the other direction after all the desert racing. And the way, and the way this is set up, this is really only, if, it's the way the course is set up this year, it only affects the outer side of the desert loop. Does that make sense? Yeah, so the guys, guys that are ra- the guys that are racing limited class, the guys that want to go pre-running in the rocks, they can stay over here. I mean, we're at the hammers right now, right? So they can stay over on the hammer side. They can pre-run all they want in any direction they want because rock guys, they drive up and down the trails and pre-running. It's just the trails. So it's just wheeling over there, go wheeling. And for the specific 35 or 40 miles of overlapping course, we're going to go one direction for the first half of the event and the other direction. So think of, think of it as... Think of it as um, when you race down in uh, Ensenada and you can't do the first 40 miles back in. You can only do it out. Yeah. That's what we're yeah. doing for the exact same amount of course. Okay. So you'll only be able to pre-run that one way the whole time. Is that correct? Or you're going to switch it? No. Oh, when, when, when you guys, when the desert guys get done on Sunday, when we open the course on Monday, right? We'll, we'll have remarked the course, remarked all the miles, remarked all the turns, remarked all the dangerous the opposite way. Okay. We're Just making that. sure. Here's a, here's, that. A, here's a tougher right question a for me that I'm going to throw your way now that you've explained that. Why do you think that there's not more trophy trucks that come out to King of the Hammers? Because when when we started talking about this originally, and I think that this is a spectacular race, I think it's one of the best run races that I've been around. The drivers ask for, they ask for safety, they ask for pre-running, they ask for their own race, they ask for media. Um, I think that King of the Hammers and Dave Cole have provided this all the way around. I mean, I, I, I would say that out of all the opportunities, especially in the United States, there doesn't seem to be one that is better tuned for the trophy truck drivers, so to speak. And, um, you know, I have my opinions, I think, um, but I, I, w- I wonder why we don't have 40 uh, trophy trucks. Is that because of the proximity of races that have been around a while, like Parker, which isn't going to run in its window now? Um, well, I'll, pre- I'll preface this and it, like it gives me my easy out so we don't, my, but my easy, my preface is, is there's going to be a lot of financial incentives to bring trophy trucks to to this race and be a part of a points championship because you're you're we're also announcing that king of the hammers is partnering with the mid 400 and the california 300 for a points championship series and it was built originally around trophy trucks excuse me around t1s around unlimited trucks um it was built originally around just that and my my insistence back to mad media was that we need to do all classes so There'll be, we're going to celebrate all the classes to answer your question. The reason why there's only seven trophy trucks here is because there's only seven trophy truck drivers. Sorry. Just because you have a, just because you have an unlimited budget and an unlimited truck doesn't make you an unlimited driver. And the, I'm positive that there's a subset of people that do it for the adventure of the sport, which is a really rad reason due to off-road racing. And there's another subset that are doing it so they can be the best in the world at doing it. And the ones that are trying to be the best in the world are doing it. When you when you do that in, in on a big, long, open course and there's no cameras on it, all you know when I left the start line and got to the finish line is I'm a trophy truck driver. When I when I, when I race the Bob 1000, I'm going to make sure using the right terms. If I go race the Bob 1000 in a trophy truck, then I am a trophy truck driver and that's all anybody knows. If you do it on a short course format, per se, where there's cameras, now everybody knows if you're slow or fast. <laughs> and there's people that don't like, I mean, I, I, I don't know. If I was really bad at something, I wouldn't want to do it on camera a lot. So you're, you're saying, you're speculating, I've said this before about short course racing in general, that there was a big influx of racers at one point, and some of them left because they don't want to race in front of God and everybody. Um, right. I think it's, I think it's a great opportunity for the racers to get out and race. I think what you provided has been great. Um, making all my efforts to be there, which we've been there. Uh, I believe every year you've had T1 trucks. And I think that's incredible that you're working with the Martellis to, uh, bring a championship series for all classes, not, not just the T1s. You're talking about everybody across the board. Yes. And I, I want to finish that up because I'm not, I'm not just trying to call out, um, unlimited truck drivers. It's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm getting at is this is even this is even bigger. 
I think the problem is having those trucks in the first place. I, I don't, there's no way, there's no physical way that we can make Formula One of off-road around seven unlimited trucks and those seven drivers. You can't do it. You can certainly do it around 40 spec versions of those trucks that have a more limited budget that can get on the course more often. But this is just me being a fan talking. I have no get, no dog in that show at all, but I believe it to make off-road racing truly palatable and truly pro as opposed to a really, really, really expensive hobby is being able to put a lot of cars racing side by side doing things. And the unlimited, it's just, I mean, Pro 4 is not the best racing in short course either, right? Pro 4 is the epitome of performance in short course racing, and it is not the best races to watch, not even close. So it's, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be we're on a live, live telecast right now. <laughs> um, so um, we're, uh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I think that if you like doing this because you like the competition and the fun, then, then that's what we should be, we should be building for those racers, whether, whatever class they race in. If they don't, if some people are better off racing different classes, that's fine. Just come do what you like to do. Does that make sense? Well, <clears throat> sure. Well, sure. And we appreciate your opinion and your, your openness to be able to throw out what you think is happening. I mean, I don't totally disagree with you. Um, yeah, what's your opinion? Why do you think they're not here? I think it's just, I think they're just, some of them are just weak and they don't want to race in this format. That's what I think. I mean, I, I think that um, being in front of everybody is awesome for some of us and maybe some people don't want to, like you said, but I'm not exactly sure why they don't come. I, I think that some of them are just so stuck in their ways that maybe maybe the races that happen around the same time frame uh cause grief for them to be out there but uh i just think it's weak that they're not um more trophy trucks our t1 trucks aren't there because you have done everything that we asked you to do as a promoter in my opinion other than i'd like you to start the race later because it's so damn could, cold we could, in the we could, and we could always improve too i mean i've had my lots of screw-ups and i will continue to do so because that's just my level of capabilities but i I believe that uh, we try, and I believe that that. Um, but we can get better. We can certainly get better, and I'll, we're going to keep trying. I mean, I'll, we're going to get different formats this year, different race, for race lanes. Um, yeah. the guys, they're they're going to race a, a forty mile loop as opposed to the hundred mile loop. So there's no remote pits. They can only they can pit in the main pit. They don't have to worry about bringing six, seven, ten, twelve, fifteen guys to pit them. Um, then. For the the full the, the full length stuff, there'll be a, a new remote pit. It won't be on Bessemer anymore. It's going to be out at Anderson. Or you're going to okay, utilize so it. New remote pit at Anderson. Correct. Yeah, we're using we're utilizing a completely different footprint of desert that we've had in the past that we've used in the past. Trying to okay, find some. So, so far, we've revealed here forty percent new course. Uh, we've talked about the fact that there's going to be uh, different uh, changes in the direction of the desert style course racing, whether you're racing desert or you're racing the rock races. Um, yep. We also have learned now that you're teaming up with Mad Media, the Mint 400 and the California 300 for a points championship. So you guys are working together. Um, let's talk about um, some of the core rock racing. Um, I know that you revealed, if I'm not mistaken, through an email that I received, that the course will be different and maybe tougher than it's been recently. I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm paraphrasing from what I think I read. It's going to be harder for sure. Very much harder. Um, maybe not harder at the 4,400 level. I think we're get, getting to a pretty good plane. But the the limited class, the limited class, uh, the other classes are have caught up their level of capability so much that I need to, I need to step it up. <laughs> Specifically, you're saying you need to make it tougher for EMC or UTV or something like that, is what you're saying? I am, yes, sir. Thanks. Yes, that's what, exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that. Yes, there'll be less. The UTV race is going to be to six o'clock now too, not not four o'clock like it has been because I don't believe there's going to be as many finishers. Copy that. I want 
I want to give them a chance to finish by making the course longer. In the past, we've had a very, very high percentage of finishers in the UCB class. Uh, Dave, uh, to go back real quick, we had a couple of people asking here on the, the T1, um, that's going to start in the afternoon now, you said, on Sunday, most likely? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds to me like we are going to, we will do something like with the Class 10s, UTVs, like the that mid mid performance pack. I mean, very fast cars, but not not unlimited. Um, have them. I'm just I'm responding to the I'm sort of responding to the ask. I mean, people want to go race the big course, and the the limited the limited leak that we had so far about it being a limited like a short course and a long course, is that UTVs and the ten guys and those those guys want to race. So we'll find a way to do that. I mean. This is kind of one of the things you said before, Cameron. This is the part that I don't do terribly well, but it's also a good thing. Like I'll I'll listen, I'll hear you out. If, we're, if you guys want to do that, we'll do. We'll I'll figure it out. I think a lot of the racers appreciate that that you actually do listen to them and you do what you know the majority of them want to do, or you know <laughs> you actually listen to them. <laughs> if I made up a schedule right now off the top of my head, I would say that it looks. I would probably move qualifying in totality to Saturday, and have big course racing on Sunday, and have small course racing Saturday afternoon. Um, I do know that for the class 11 guys, we're not doing the short course. We're doing the 40 mile loop and we're doing a land rush start. Um, and so I would expect there to, there to be one lap of the 40. I know we have a big 1450 class coming. Um, I'm not sure how much they want to bite off. I've heard 40 miles. I've heard 80 miles. I've heard more. So I want to give people what they want. Figure it out. Nice. Specific changes to the big race. Um, uh, anything different with the way the spectators will be able to, to view? I know that you guys have been incredibly open with uh, people driving um, to the spots and being able to really see the racing, which has been really cool. Any any changes with the spectating uh, for any of the races, really? No, we've actually we're incre we're increasing the number of spectator areas. Um, um, you'll still be able to drive around the desert we have places you, you you can't drive i mean we we have to protect the race course in certain areas but um there's still all kinds of places to drive while we're racing that you can go do and either enjoy the land and not watch the race or drive out to a remote area and and just uh enjoy the de de desert from a different perspective nothing's changed from that perspective at all um, one of the questions I think that comes up is the purses for the, the racers. I know that you guys are doing a, um, when people buy their pre buy their tickets, if they choose a, a driver, $10 of their entry money or their ticket money goes to that driver, which is a really cool and different stat. I also understand from James masters, who's your new uh, director of media, um, that you guys are also going to be offering a t-shirt, um, of choice that you can choose to buy uh, when they sign up for their tickets. I think that's all great and very different and forward thinking. I didn't know about the t-shirt. I know about the competitive payback program. Okay. Yeah, we're... I, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Like I said, at the beginning of the show, this is all just happenstance and opinion. So don't yeah, take no, it to the bank. I, um, no, I hope well, they're, I hope they're doing t-shirts. The team is awesome. And they're, they're probably pulling all the levers, trying to do all the things to make it cool. And so if they're going to do a t-shirt giveaway, that's right. That's like um. That could be, let's talk about the purse real quick. Then let's talk about some of the staff that you've brought in. What, what are the purses for the races, Dave? Is there a way, do you have that pre-calculated or is that something that happens based on entries or is that a no, hybrid? Of not, no, no, no. I don't like doing it based on entries. I think that's, I, I, I don't know. It's kind of like a catfish kind of bait and switch kind of thing. Um, so we've committed, we've committed a purse. I've got to look at it again, but it's, I think it's in the, $35,000 range for just a basic class and 100, 100 grand for unlimited trucks and 100 grand for, for uh, 4,400. I mean, I think the smallest payday per class is, is around $35,000. I thought, I thought what was really amazing last year, Dave, I'd, I don't have all the details once again, but after the fact, you decided to share more prize money with the racers. Was that last year or the year before? I don't know what promoter has ever gone back after the race and added purse money to people's checks. That's a, it's a pretty staggering stat. My view has been from the very beginning that our drivers are our salespeople. Like we don't have a sale. We don't have salespeople. In fact, I really haven't ever marketed anything. We don't really promote things very well here. turns out, but well, the, the, um, the couple million people that watch it live on the internet's a, pretty good start i would say but, but i don't know how we did it man if i knew how we if i had a 
a recipe, I'd go do it again, but I, I don't have a recipe. It's just happened. But um, the, the concept that when last year we went from 26,000 to 39,000 people bought tickets, that's, that's our number. We went, we went from 26,000 something to 36,494 last year. When that happened, that's a, that's a financial windfall that I wasn't expecting. I wasn't budgeting, you know, a 50% growth in people coming and buying tickets at the gate. I've known for years that people drive around the gate. It is what it is. So that's the reason why I added the money last year. And then this year, we just, well, why, why leave it up to doubt or why get the questions or have somebody bummed that I, if I started at three quarters of a million dollars at first this year and I didn't up it to a million dollars and why did I not add it this year, blah, 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 blah. So we made a competitor payback program and we pay at the end of the week, every week, you, someone picks you, like they buy a ticket and they affiliate with your team. You get paid at the end of the week. We've been paying out for about a month and a month now. Well, as long as you're entered in the race, right? So some of us that haven't yeah. maybe entered yet better get our act together. Yeah. Yeah, for, a veteran, for a veteran and... of your status, Cameron, actually all the veterans of your status don't register to like 18 seconds prior to the race. Oh, look, there's Cameron. I guess he's racing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm racing. I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you. You could have well, already made. You could have already made all your other money, ways. Cameron. There's other ways to notify me that you're that you're racing. Um, okay, I'll <laughs> enter the race. Co Cody <laughs> enters the race for me, but he's always waiting for me to tell him to go ahead and do it. It's not right, Cody's well, fault. It's my fault. We can oh, look at this as self accountability. For oh. the, from a from a Hall of Famer, Cam. Country clever. Hall of Famer. Oh man. Yeah, Hall of Famer. Yeah, dump that on me. I didn't even do anything. Hey, let's talk more about the racing. Yes. New Go. courses, new ideas. What other new ideas is Dave Cole playing around with? Um, whether it's qualifying or um what what are things that are you're hearing from people? I mean, I know you talk to everybody. Is there anything else that you're contemplating or that you want to put out there that people could react to? Because fan fish, you know, you, you get some reactions, we can throw some stuff out there. Yeah. We're just trying to make the experience better for everyone that's coming. I mean, whether it's, you know, we're going to have, we're going to have pubs now on, on private land and we're going to have the ability for people to just be entertained um, and safely. Uh, but then we're, you know, we're just trying, just trying to improve. I mean, there's nothing really dramatically different. Um, we've got some, we've got some new tricks with regards to coverage looking forward to. Um, but not it's been a bad year I, I mean it's been a good year but there there was some some really cool stuff that we have been working on that's that's proving to be challenging but some of but some out of that's come some really cool other pickups that we didn't have before so i know it's going to be a great show no doubt do you have a you have some new people that are with you you care to give us a little bit of introduction maybe they don't have to be on camera if you don't want but a couple new faces new new people filling some roles uh, there's two guys in here right now. Mike Jams is right here. Mike's Mike's our CEO and tries to help me be an adult, which, as you will both know, is a challenge. A challenge. He's a big job. Um, and then Tim Pellegrino's back there, who is certainly not the one responsible for making me be an adult. They they uh, they they work against each other, I believe. Um, and uh, but Tim is our Tim is uh, kind of like a director of energy. He's going out and making making new uh vendor relationships with new experiences and mike is giving us a whole new perspective on how to how to manage things and how to actually make a budget and figure out how to do this and make it sustainable now we, we do have a couple questions uh on here that have been repeated a bunch a bunch of people are asking about the qualifying course dave can you talk about the qualifying course at all or desert or rocks or both uh both i think mostly rocks it looks like but you can talk about both if you want okay. yeah i've got anything from a 10 to a 40 mile qualifying loop in the desert. And then for rocks, we're going back to 2010 qualifying. Actually, the first year you were a driver of record camera, I think believe you, you qualified on Chocolate Thunder, right? So we're gonna run that exact course, plus we're gonna add in idle issues. So it'll be around the mountain. It'll be a fairly long course for qualifying for the rock guys this year. And it'll be, it'll be everybody thinks I'm, Full of shit, but we're going up Chocolate Thunder. We're doing it off the start line, so there'll be a lot of people that don't make it 50 feet through the qualifying course. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start qualifying going up Chocolate Thunder, 
not you're not talking about the race you're talking about the qualifying, the qualifying. The qualifying yes i think it's cool i think um me personally I, I like seeing more of that rock course and that's such a great stadium area to be yep. able to watch as a spectator both i mean really both um idle issues and uh chocolate thunder have great possibilities for viewing and i think it's going to be interesting to see especially if I don't know how you're going to run it, but if something plugs up, that's going to make it even more interesting. Well, I'm actually going to change qualifying there too. Once you, once, I'm going to send a car no sooner than every minute, but I'm going to send them as soon as they clear, no, no sooner than when they clear Chocolate Thunder. So once you get up and out, and I know you're through the rocks, if it's once another minute goes by, then I'm sending the next car. So there'll be constantly cars going on the course and there'll be, there will be passing during qualifying. But not 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 in the uphill rocks. By the time you catch somebody, they would have been off pace and broken. And there's a there's thirty lanes through this qualifying course, so it's not a thing. That sounds. I mean, it sounds really interesting. I like what you've been doing with the infield, so to speak. But I think this is more uh, friendly for the rock community, and I think even better for the spectators. Although I do think that the stadium area that you've been using has been good for spectators. This will be a, a very interesting uh, area for people to view, in my opinion. Well, we're, while we're doing qualifying on Monday, Sunday night, not Sunday night, but on Monday, I believe Tuesday. I don't remember the dates now, but G uh, Gas, Lee Perfect, and, the, and Poppy are going to be running short course on our on our short course area, the, the, stand, the standard start finish line area. They're going to build a legit um, short course venue. And bring in their trucks that race the gas series and it sounds like some more too that was so that was you, one of, that was one of the other questions that we've had a few times here dave was about the short course if you could provide any details about the short course race i know how to spell short course i believe it starts with a q um no seriously since since i was kind of offered the opportunity to be or was part of this deal, deal with gas i just stay out of lee and poppy's way i try <laughs> to give them what they need which Sometimes I can't give them everything they need, um, but they 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 run it. Um, I know they're bringing, um, they're working with both their guys and with John Goodby to to build the best course. I know that they are, and we're able to build a purpose built course for for short course trucks because we're going to move the rock guy qualifying out. Cool, very cool. And will we still race that short course coming into Hammertown and out uh, as yes. we have been? Yes, absolutely. Very cool. Um, I I have seen uh, some social posts from Cody Wagner, uh, Laser no. who uh, Cody been... Wagner posts on social media. Yeah, <laughs> said he's looking for a driver, Cameron. I just put in my application. He was looking for a driver, but then he actually came to his senses and said I was going to drive. So, oh. um, I I hope. I mean, I hope he doesn't change his mind. I don't know but if I that's coming to his senses or not. <laughs> do, you, do you give him an AARP discount? Um, for your, your your driving fees, you charge of them less because you're because you're of your advanced skill set. Are you calling me seasoned today? Weathered is a thing. Yeah. Torn. I was... That's rough, right there. That's some rough content, right there. We're gonna have to make sure we uh, we out you on something along the way. But uh, my question there was that Cody in the past has come up. I know you guys added Laser Nut Alley. Uh, last year, something a little bit different, getting out of the sand in the bottom adjacent yes. to uh, um, idle issues. I'm losing my train of thought on. Um, we will uh, be racing racing up Laser Nut Alley and her problems on the way to idle issues during the qualifying loop. Yes. Okay. Um, but creative, what I was new, new creative lines that I haven't that I haven't marked yet, so you won't know where to pre run. There were some delineation issues, obviously, last year with the cones and people skipping mm. some of those sections. I'm assuming you have thought. Uh, thought a way through that to make sure they don't do that yep we're giving the crowd paintball guns <laughs> oh even better right on but what i was asking about cody and running some of those new lines are, are is is there people out there working on new lines something different we haven't seen um i i know that you guys came up with um a couple different routes that hadn't been used before over the last couple of years is that something you're striving to do once again Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I want to, we, we, uh, that's the thing that's creating that can, the, all the anxiety about the closure stuff is we were able to, when we do our, when we're doing a permit, we're able to apply for the footprint of the land as opposed to the actual course itself. So we're not, it, 
that's the reason why only reason why the closure looks different because normally it would just be one race course and we'd only be closing just the race course but now it's a footprint but when it comes to that year it's still only the race course does that make sense i'm answering your other question about us being able to do new stuff in line yeah there, there was one what one question regarding that um people want to know if they're going to be able to go back up on the hillsides of backdoor during the shootout 100 yes 100 yes okay 100 yes there we go Wow, that's a massive amount of information. New trails coming. Um, uh, that's great to hear. Always uh, something fun. Builds a little un uh, uh, unnerving, maybe isn't right way to say it, but uncertainty uh, heading towards those new trails. I uh, I know I, I had a little bit of anxiety when we first uh, took on uh, Dead Blow or King's Graveyard, which have, took us out of the race, actually. Um, but yeah, it's cool to see you guys working on coming up with different ideas. I also like when you guys change up the formats in different directions, multiple laps. Are we still looking at for the big hammers race? Are we still looking at a three lap race? Are we looking at different format changes? It'll be at least three laps. <laughs> at least three <laughs> laps. Well, will I, you I be like able, it. will you be able to pre-run the qualifier? People are asking, is there going to be a pre-run for the qualifying course for rock for the rock guys? I think they're talking about. Sure. Yeah. We'll have the course set up when we in at the opening of the game. Of the... Yes. You'll have the course before you even get here for qualifying. Okay. Like when the gate, when the gate opens on the 26th, we'll release the qualifying course. Cause we've okay. already marked it, marked it. It'll be apparent just by driving over there. Perfect. Okay, so uh, Hammertown opens when, and the bikes are the bikes the first three days that Hammertown's open? Yep, and we're going to figure out something. This is completely off script, but uh, we've been asked, and we will sort it out, a way to do a bikes, a reduced entry ticket for bikes, just for, if you show, it, it's only going to be at the gate. You come at the gate, and you just get a bikes weekend kind of pass. That way, people aren't paying for the entire, the, the entire event. It's $50 now, but it it's uh at the gate's going to be a hundred bucks and we, we don't want them to have to well, I want the people that have always been coming for cheap to be able to buy the cheap so i just can't keep building the event bigger for um and and stay stayed and keep growing it and and stay where we're at I and mean, we have to we have to grow let um, let me clar let me clarify dave you said that yeah. right now people can buy their king of the hammers pass ticket which that gets yes. them into hammer town for the entire yes. event get some yes 100 percent for 50 dollars. yes for that's pretty weeks. inexpensive dave that's pretty expensive just to have a porta potty to go but, to for uh, but, eight days. but it used to be free cameron it used to be when we started king of the hammers it was free and then it was a donation and it's been 50 bucks for about four years now i think and the People that paid 25 before that stayed at 25 and the people and anybody now can buy it at 50. I just, my view on it is the people that uh, have built it and, and can hear us talking now, they should be able to buy it cheaper. But the people that hear about it on January 20th, because it was the cool thing on YouTube, they should pay more. They, yeah. they're, they're, they're coming to consume what we've built for the last 20 years. Well, it's I, not I, I think it's fair, Dave, and I'll, I'll highlight it for you a little bit. I mean, uh, events and promoters. I mean, yeah, everybody says it's uh, BLM land, but that there is a permit involved. There is fencing involved. There's infrastructure involved. All those park rangers, BLM, fire, EMS, police, security, um, all of that doesn't come without a cost. And I think that what's really um, a great testimony to what you've done and without, like I said, apple polishing you too much is that even though that infrastructure has grown, and the cost maybe has grown. It's been able to stay, um, like I say, the Bernie Man for off road. It's a it's an off road festival of people that enjoy um, desert and off road, and everybody still has that feeling camping out there. And I, I personally, I think it's the greatest experience in all of off road. Um, I would prefer that people uh, don't act crazy at night and don't do stupid stuff, but. Um, I do think overall that the, what you've created inside Hammertown and around the events is spectacular and nothing compares bottom line. That's why I want to be there for all five or six races, because I believe in what you've done. And so do all these other, whatever, hundred thousand people that come to the desert over that week. Yeah. 
I, and I appreciate that. And I'm. It's just been a fun thing. Like this month, these are the these are the things, and we're, I'm out here now because this is where we like to be. But um, um, yeah, no. Sorry, I was kind of rambling before, and I appreciate I appreciate being able to talk to you guys. Yeah, for sure, Dave. What else is there? Anything else that you would like to reveal? Anything you want to hint about? Anything uh, you want to send out there? There was some questions. I don't know if you have this yet about the entertainment, Dave. I don't know if that's lined up yet or not. There was some people asking about the bands and stuff. I believe Sublime's playing on Wednesday night. That was the only night they can play this year. And Sublime will always come back because I just like they're they're cool and they like coming out here. So they're, they're going to come back. Um, we are working with uh, a buddy of mine who does music festivals to just put together all the music and we'll have those the acts out here in the next week or so. There'll be several, five, okay. six, seven well, bands. Question, separate fee for the bands or that's all included no. in your hammers uh, pass as well? And 50 bucks. Yeah. When's the last time you go to a concert and spend 50 bucks, right? Like that's, I don't know. I don't understand how anybody complains about the entry fee personally. I mean, it's honestly, it's quite ridiculous for somebody to complain about it. If they're going to complain about it, they should probably just stay home in my opinion, really. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to hang out with people that complain about that. <laughs> All of the qualifying is you can spectate all of the short course racing. You can spectate all of the races you can spectate and uh, it all gets you a pass inside. I, I don't know for a hundred bucks, Dave, when you get to the race, I think that's a pretty fair deal. So I wish you well on that. I don't see why anybody would gripe, but someone, someone no, will find a reason it. to gripe. <laughs> not worried about it. It's all good. One of the other so, questions, uh, Dave, uh, real quick was the entry list. Do you know when you guys are going to be posting the entry list for any of the classes? I think we should be doing it right now. If we aren't, then that's a fail and I'll fix that. But I know we have, I mean, as of this morning, like 210 people entered. So mm -hmm. I'm not, yeah, we should be show, showing that and sharing that and I'll make sure that happens. I apologize that it hasn't. Cool. And no, cool. Uh, just to clarify for everybody, we got more people confused again. It, it is, it is per, is it per person $50 or is it per car? And that gets you the whole week. It's not per day. Two weeks and it's fifty dollars for two weeks and total. that's per person or per car right. but per person person per but, wristband but it, per wristband but it's but that's what it costs now in on january 2nd it goes to 75 and at the gates 100 and that's what everybody's freaking out about but what i'm trying to do is tell everybody now everybody that's ever been tell everybody you know so you get cheap tickets yeah like I, and, I and don't the wristband the, the wristband gets you in to hammertown correct Yes. Yeah. And backdoor shootout and all the arriving drives to all the vehicles and all the other stuff that happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you need a wristband to be able to do any of that. So if somebody doesn't have a wristband, you're not doing any of that stuff. Right. Correct. Okay. Well, Dave, it sounds like you've got quite a bit on your plate moving forward. It doesn't seem like we're far away. Uh, pretty exciting time uh, for off-roaders to have, um, the opportunity to come and do this and and uh king of hammers is the big kickoff race for 2023 for a lot of people yep it's gonna be i think there's there's some more announcements to come i think it's gonna be a pretty good pretty good weekend that opening that desert weekend it's gonna be pretty cool yeah i'm looking forward to be out there i'll be out there for the desert race for sure i'll be out there the, probably the whole week before it so that that's always a it's always a fun one there's not any other um desert race that's quite like this and i know the guys that do show up have a lot of fun and i know we were talking about the trophy truck guys earlier t1 guys whatever you want to call them hopefully some more of them show up like you said cameron this is their race come out get some cool coverage and i don't know hopefully more of them show up <laughs> coverage pre-running purse yeah. i mean you heard it all right there yeah there's a there's a joke there's a joker area in this year's course in the desert where you can choose to cut the corner but it's it's kind of like um it's kind of like cutting the corner um in Matomi on that one section where you can cut the corner and it's about a mile shorter, but a foot deeper. I mean, and you could choose to be there or you could choose to drive out onto a lake bed and bone out. And I honestly don't know which one's faster. I was going to go play and see which one was faster, but you'll have options like that this year, which aren't typical. I like, I like it. <clears throat> I like the option lines. I like big options. I like uh, thinking, having to think about what you're doing um, is a big part of racing, I think. And when you add in, the elements of uh, having to make decisions maybe in the race and making sure you get to the right lap. I mean, it sounds so simple, but there's many people that have just chosen the wrong lap or the, or the wrong 
route and ruined their race, but that's all part of it. You got to come with your A game ready to play. And if you're not, then King of the Hammers maybe isn't the place for you, but the coolest place to hang out in the world is the desert and King of the Hammers offers a lot to see. Cheers, man. Well, appreciate you guys. I'm sure we'll talk between now and then and look forward to seeing them. Right any, on, more Dave, questions, Dave, Fish? any more questions, Fish? Um, some people were asking about the EV class. Is there anything about the EV class you want to say yet? Yeah, so I can tell you that the so the e, there's two different EV classes. There's just the open EV class, like what Kyle's been racing in the past couple of years. I know Joe Silva's got a beautiful car he's put together um, that's going to race. I'm not sure if him and Kyle are racing together or what that organization that looks like. The spec class that we provided the motors to, so we've sent out motors and inverters to 11 teams, but we have been on the struggle bus trying to get them integrated and working, and now they're working. It's amazing. I drove the car for the first time three days ago. Hypercraft is legit. The controllability of the car. So now they're they're gonna they're gonna go finalize all the safety protocol for for um, being able to make that that integration repeatable, and then just send the kit to the racers and they'll start building cars it's awesome. gonna be fun very interesting but right. well, one last question probably um is it all ages for the wristband is there a minimum age to get a wristband to get in anywhere is there oh, there's, any restrictions there's the standard so like under 12 is free veterans are half price active duty is free there's all this normal stuff you would get absolutely okay so it is all ages event just so everybody knows yeah absolutely all ages event and but kids are cheaper a lot or free. Cool. I can't even remember the exact things. <laughs> it's all good. I'm sure you thought it through. Well, thank right. you, Dave Cole. King of Hammers looks to be another banger, so to speak. We're looking forward to uh, lots of desert racing, lots of rock racing, many different classes. Um, of course, all the different aspects that you bring to the lake bed, including announcing tonight that Sublime will be there on Wednesday night inside the Hammertown. It all sounds like a lot of fun, and we appreciate the efforts you and your crew go through to promote desert racing and off-roading in general. Cheers, man. Appreciate you guys. See you soon, okay? Right on, Dave. Austin, another good one. Stoked to be able to roll out some information and, and share it with the public. Yep. All good. Thank, thanks for coming on, Dave, Cameron, and uh, I'll see you guys in a few weeks at King of the Hammers. That's going to do it, everybody. Be safe. Be smart. If you think it's a bad idea, it probably is, so check yourself. Uh, a lot of people in one place don't get spooled up uh, by bad decision-making, you guys. Be safe and be smart. We'll see you next time on Fishistics. See you guys.